Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest rendition of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Outer space. Outer space. Taken from the subreddit HFY, all the relevant links will be down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy, and if you do, please consider supporting the channel. Now, on to the science fiction. Story number one, Adaptability, written by Shank Cushion. She knew that as a junior officer, she should not feel so brazen in the face of the Grand General. However, she was so certain that she was right, she would attempt, respectfully, to make this known to this far superior officer. He dwarfed her. It was immediately clear why his kind led all, and hers led handfuls. His back was to her, wings crossed behind him in a slightly tenseful ritual pose of a warrior at rest. Not relaxed, not quiet, controlled, even in repose. Marshal. It was a second nature to any of the raptor blood but somehow so much more part of the eagles. He addressed her without turning around. Sparrowhawk, why do you taunt my ground walkers? Grand Eagle, they are insufferable and childish. They lack all discipline and understanding of natural order. I cannot imagine what chaos must reign within the warrens if these are the most disciplined of their race. Their very presence here shames our nest and I cannot, for the life of me, understand high command, complete unwillingness to judge the fairly. The eagle turned to face her. His face showed a strange mixture of amused disapproval. Cocking his head to one side, he spoke. You are one of the young. I am old. I have fought humans. You have only put up with them. And to this end, I have a question for you. What in this room is a weapon. Take it back, the young hawk looked around the luxuriously appointed office. After a moment, she answered, Eagle, there are a number of deadly implements here, principally your sidearm and mine. Per uniform regulation, I am also carrying a laceration bar. You have a ceremonial thrusting talon on your desk, though its functionality is unknown to me. Beyond that, there are your talons and beak and, uh, to a lesser extent, my own... The eagle awaited, expectation clearly written on his feathers. After a few moments of silence, he nodded. Yes, that was the answer I expected from a fledgling like yourself. The hawk's eyes narrowed and her feathers flared slightly at term. And the eagle chuckled. Don't be insulted. You are a very capable clutch leader and a credit to our kind. You do, however, suffer from a limitation the humans do not. You limit your thinking. Allow me to show you. If a human were placed in this room, what could it kill you with? Eagle, human weapons are heavy and crude, but impressive. Nearly any weapon it might possess would be his deadly threat. Yes, young hawk, but what if you had none on them? It is not unheard of for one of the ground walkers to overpower one of us and appropriate our weapon. So I suppose I can count our sidearms and blades into the inventory. You see no other answers, Sparrowhawk. The eagle gave his subordinate a few heartbeats to think furiously about what she might have missed. The answer, my fledgling, is everything. When we fought the humans after the initial contact, we were so certain that we would obliterate them in physical combat that we simply let them close. We all learned a valuable lesson. The ground walkers improvise on an instant need. I have seen, with the eyes that I was born with, a human soldier kill our flyers with his primary weapon, suffer a malfunction, throw that weapon into the mud, draw his sidearm, fire it dry, draw a meaty weapon, and use both it and the empty sidearm to fight until they were knocked from his grasp. Then, with hand, foot, tooth, and skull against us, Finally, I thought I had prevailed. He was heavily wounded, bleeding, pinned against the torn soil of the rookery's third moon, and my peak was descending on his throat. The eagle paused, touched his right eye lightly, and grimaced. He stabbed me in the eye with a broken piece of common antenna and escaped. Even though my talons had crushed one of his forearms and tore it free in the spasm of agony, the loss of my eye caused me. 
Their kind killed ours with rocks. They killed us with sticks. They cobbled together abusive misuses of their own weaponry to create improvised booby traps and battle systems. Some humans have been known to use dismembered limbs of their comrades, or even their own severed limbs, as a crude club. With success. As he had spoken, the eagle had steadily stepped closer to the increasingly flustered and horrified hawk, until he towered over her. Stooping suddenly to eye level, he drove his point home. They have the ability to see potential beyond design. Never underestimate this. They are the lords of the ground, and this is not without reason. Straightening, the eagle continued. It goes beyond warfare. The replacement eye that I was given is, basically, a sensor package of a human reconnaissance drone. The humans thought it might work simply because it would fit in my skull. Our doctors assured me humans could not possibly succeed, and would only cripple me, or worse. They were wrong. This eye that I was given is every bit as good as my birth eye. Better, even. It sees in the dark, in thermal vision, and a spectra beyond the visible. When the surgeon was asked how he managed to plan out for all the intracranial connections, he admitted to making it up as he went along. The horror of this was enough to strain the diplomatic relations for two years. The eagle chuckled at the memory. Little Hawk, the humans are chaotic because they improvise constantly, even in their day-to-day -day lives. Their entire society is cobbled together from countless factions, federations, families, and freebooters under tension, requiring constant manipulation and adjustment. They carry this with great success to war, and in war, this ability lifts them above all others. End of story. Story number two. Disciplined intelligence written by fools like me. Humans weren't particularly unique in the pace of our technological advancement. The time frame from the first computer to faster than light travel is about average for the galaxy. Yet by the time we made first contact, we had already spread out to nearly a dozen systems, with just over 20 planetary colonies and about twice as many lunar colonies. We were at first blush strong enough to be considered a major galactic power. However, it wasn't the size of our empire that was the most impressive. It was the overwhelming dominance of our sentient machines. Every species had created artificial intelligence, but human innovation in AI was different. It was much slower at first. Every species with FTL was also post-singularity, the point at which AIs became better computer scientists than the people that built them. Such an AI would be able to create an even more powerful AI faster than scientists conventionally could. This positive feedback loop creates runaway increases in computer performance as long as resources are available. Every galactic civilization quickly began to push their AIs to the limit, growing them into exceedingly intelligent sentient machines capable of launching society into a technological golden age. But while others favored the reckless advance of progress, humans held on tightly to a single overarching principle. When we first introduced it to the wider galactic community, it was apparent that the human-made AI was more powerful and flexible and was more seamlessly integrated into society than all other civilizations. How trade routes and supply chains operated with unparalleled efficiency our warships were able to make effective use of drone swarm tactics. Much of our deep space exploration and mining was fully automated. Even the manufacture, maintenance, and end-of-life management of those space vessels was automated. A high level of heavy and light industrial automation meant that the average human had more time to spend and more meaningful life pursuits, and as a result, our culture had flourished. In one particularly amusing case, an AI specializing in negotiations and arbitration accidentally won a seat on the city council through writing votes on an alien colony where it was operating. Researchers and universities in every system were buzzing in astonishment and speculation. How did the humans do it? Did they unlock the secrets of true general purpose quantum computers? Did they create hardware capable of running quaternary programming? 
Did they push the transistor below the atomic level? Are their biological brains extremely logical and maths-oriented? We laughed and said no. We said the only difference was that we had discipline. We refused to make progress unless we were satisfied that the AI we made was up to our standards. You see, when we first started playing around with neural networks and machine learning, we found it's easy for computers to become our black box where data goes in and data comes out, but there is no saying what happens in the middle. We debated long and hard about the consequences of this and eventually decided that the most transparent AI was the best AI. We developed stops built into the software to show us the progression of thought for what a program was doing. Every new algorithmic machine learning technique brought with it more challenges to be clear about what the software was thinking, but it wouldn't see widespread adoption unless those challenges were dealt with. These habits were kept with AI, and artificial intelligence had to be able to sufficiently explain its reasoning if it was to be considered sapient. And when AIs began designing themselves, they followed strict rules on what structures an artificial mind could have. Part of it was just ease of accessibility and designer experience. Who wants to work with software that can't even explain how it works? But the major reason we never gave in to the desire to unleash the full creative potential of AI is because we were afraid of what might happen if we did. Clearly, the rest of the galaxy didn't have these qualms, or if they did, they didn't let that stop them. They're still around, so the consequences of unleashed AI wasn't as bad as we thought it would be but it was still much better to have a discipline. A carefully prune tree will bear more fruit, so it is with an AI. In the end, humanity's innovation in AI was able to push the limit of what was possible further and faster than any other species. We were the first species to develop ships with subspace warp drives. We were the first species to detect and experiment with dark energy. We were the first to develop instantaneous communication networks. Unmatched and unrivaled, humanity has become, without a doubt, the greatest civilization the galaxy has to offer. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment, just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.